Welcome back to Highlights from the Hill. I'm here with my co-host, Jim Cousins. Hello. And we are so excited to be back. Yeah, our second season. Our second season. <laughs> and we have so many great things planned. There, as always, there's so much going on within the schools and so much that we want to share with you, the highlights of, of our work. Um, and this show is all about a very big highlight, and that is the new Marathon School. That's right. We've got a few guests coming on, and we're going to have an uh, interesting conversation about it, what the programs are scheduled and how the building's turning out. And before we bring them on, uh, we sent Mike Terosian out to take a quick tour to let you see what the status of the new school is. And we're here today at the new Marathon School. We're going to take a little tour outside, inside, see where we're at, see what's left. We're here to your right. My left is the main entrance to the school. Uh, there's, a, there's a structure that goes on the outside that's not there yet that will provide weather protection for coming in. Um, people that come and approach the school will, will do a buzzer at the outside edge and people here in the main administration office will let the people in. Uh, there'll be another uh, wall of windows and doors right at this point. Um, as you get back into this space, as you can see, the high elevated space you can see up to the second floor, and you can see all the way down to the end, that's the school bus entrance. That's where the kids will come in and leave for the school buses. Off to the left from the school bus entrance is the gym, the cafetorium. Off to the right is the pre-K and kindergarten wing, the first and second floors. This is a typical pre-K classroom. Uh, you can see the entrance back here behind me. And as you enter to your left, you see the wires coming out of the wall and some piping. There'll be two sinks on that wall, plus all the storage cabinetry for classroom supplies. Uh, over on this side uh, is the uh, bathroom. So each pre-K and each kindergarten classroom has a dedicated bathroom uh, extending off the classroom. Over on this side, we have some uh, teaching preparation space. And as you can see, uh, on this side, we have the windows facing the uh, woods and the bus entrance. Here we are in the gymnasium. Um, the, the gymnasium, this one's just slightly bigger than the one at Center School. Uh, there's a hardwood floor. It's, a, uh, as I recall, a maple strip floor, similar to what you have at most gymnasiums. The same thing we have at the high school. The entire surface gets painted. Right now, it's kind of dark because it's concrete block, but the block gets sealed, it gets painted. The entire ceiling gets painted, the ductwork gets painted. Um, a word about the paint is we have a, um, the architectural firm has hired a person who specializes in these colors, and we have a lot of colors. And the idea is to have kind of a playful thing for the kids and, and to make it nice. Yeah, because right in front of me is the cafeteria. Uh, so you can imagine uh, for parent nights, etc., these doors to the music room would be opened. What's Currently, a music room would become a stage for those occasions, and uh, these doors would open up the stage area to seating that would be in the cafeteria space. So the architects call this a cafetorium because it's a dual-use space. Uh, key thing to keep in mind, it's a full-service music classroom with sound-rated movable walls uh, and a performance stage uh, for the, the occasions when it will be used as such. Exit the cafetorium through this door. Uh, we come out into a play space. Again, it's kind of a progression of uh, varied surface until we reach the grass field on the, on the other side. Uh, if you look over to your right, uh, you see an entrance way. This is actually the other side. Uh, within there is the main entrance area to the school that we showed before. Uh, so this will be the door the students would use to come outside to recess or re-enter the building. As you go down to the right, uh, these, this is the main uh, kindergarten and first grade classroom wing. So the, the first floor is the kindergarten classrooms and the second floor will be the first grade classrooms. And if you look down towards the end, uh, you'll recall back in January 2017, uh, we came back with uh, enhanced enrollment numbers and uh, the town graciously approved four additional classrooms. Those were seamlessly integrated into the wing that you see on the far right. Uh, the design allows for the addition of an additional four classrooms uh, designed into the space beyond the building on the right. That was so exciting to see that, that footage on the video and all of the changes taking place. I know that we went in the summer um, and we were also at the um, 
the event where they had the the last beam. Oh, the beam raising. There you are. Yeah. Um, what did you notice in this video, the biggest changes? So from my visit in the summer to now seeing the building, the, the blueprints are truly coming to life. In terms of working on the project, I have a sense of what's where, but to walk through the building or see the video and see those spaces come to fruition, it's just unbelievable. It's really happening. Um, and it just is, it, it's a delight to see and so exciting. And let's just talk about that for a couple of minutes because for people who are watching, when you talk about the blueprints, Lauren, and I know the hours, literally hours and hours, Jim, that Lauren has spent mm -hmm. along with the architects and the builders on the specifics that people wouldn't even think about. So can you give us kind of just a little picture of what that means? You chose the tiles on the floor and it, it goes down to every little thing that maybe things that you wouldn't have even imagined going into the project. So I think um, overall, just looking at the layout of the building and the proximity for what is close to preschool, looking at their little legs traversing the building, where do they need to go? Are they close to the nurse? Are they close to the office? Where's their access point to their playground? Looking at um, you know travel paths in terms of uh, again, having a facility that students can move around that while it's large in size will not feel that way to them. So working with the architects, there are sections of the hallway where it comes together for small group space, color transitions, so that you have a sense of community and closeness despite the building being a large building. Yeah. So you mentioned color. I'm just wondering, they talked about that on the video briefly. Do you have any idea how many colors are going into that school? There are a variety of shades working with the architect. Some are an accent wall, a transition. So the total number, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's high or low in comparison to other buildings, but something I am thrilled about is to have color in the building. Um, and to have colors that's timeless. Our art SML, Colleen uh, from the high school, worked with us when we were working on color. So she had that artist, artist perspective in terms of timeless colors, appropriateness for children, brightless brightness and that was very helpful to have her view because I'm looking at it from a different perspective th than she is from her art artist's eye. And there's an example that I love from one of the beginning uh, meetings where we were looking at tiles and transitions and I just love this this visual <coughs> of where are students looking? Well they're they're looking down, they, they don't have the adult level view so they've planned transitions with tiling colors so that students will know they're in the right hallway. You know, mm -hmm. well, I know I'm in the blue tile hallway or yep. I'm in the green tile ha hallway. So if they make a wrong turn, they'll, they're going to pick up pretty quickly that, oh, that's not the hallway I'm supposed to be in. So planning for transitions and also just independence. We want this to be their building that they feel they're really comfortable in and, and really it's really being built to suit those little people. And the theme through the building is it all starts here, a nod to the marathon, a nod to the Charles River, and a nod to the learning in the Hopkinton Public Schools. So in the floor, there are different designs. In the lobby, um, some you know attention to runners in the river with different prints in the floor. Preschool has patterns of shapes in their floor. The kindergarten wing has letters, and the first grade area has numbers. So you do have a little section to help designate where you are in the building based on colors in the floor. That's awesome. So that is, yeah, things like that excite us. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the parent perspective might be on that? So it's interesting because you've had children through many buildings, including yes. Center, and now you, your youngest will experience first grade in Center. Yes, I'm very excited. Um, one thing I didn't share with you is uh, when I saw the video, I got excited because it's what I used to do in my former life. Oh. I used to do the, I was on construction sites all the time, and I did the furniture. So when I see this, this is where I used to come in. So it's really exciting um, to see what used to be a floor plan actually come to life. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited, Maggie. Well, Maggie was, I was pregnant with Maggie when the, the talk of the new school came about. Oh my goodness, what an um, interesting perspective when yes. we think about that. So she's been all, to all the town meetings yeah. and all the special <laughs> town meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, but while, you know, we love, Center School, you know, it's the heart of this little town. The kids need newer amenities. Uh, it needs to be brighter, like you've mentioned. Um, and honestly, every kid, my kids that went through Center School, they loved it. They loved their teachers. They loved the building. It was a cute little schoolhouse downtown. But I think we really need this. And I think um, we're all going to benefit from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it is, it's exciting the space that we'll have to really bring our educational programming to the level that we desire it to be. We share space, it's something that we've done and teachers are very good at it and very collaborative, but how wonderful will it be to have a space where you have your designated group of children and you're not overhearing the next group mm -hmm. or working in the halls because there's not another space mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for that moment that you need to work with those students. So th that's a, a thrilling aspect mm -hmm. that will be something that's new to us is to have that space available. Mm -hmm. um, something else that's wonderful in this, so many wonderful things, is we have a family resource center. Mm -hmm. So something I would love to do is have opportunities for parents in the community to come in to the school, and we're limited at center now. We don't have an, such a space. So be it parent trainings from our guidance counselor, our nurse, some teachers going over tips for parents, be it mm -hmm. registrations, be it our nurse meeting with parents. We have a space that that can happen. Um, the HPTA coming in or half, yeah. that's, mm -hmm. um, that's wonderful. Which makes me wonder, Lauren, is that intended only for parents? parents of, of Marathon School children or would that be a parent resource center for parents across the district? I, I see it as across the district. Mm -hmm. I've talked with some other um, department leaders um, and, and sometimes it's, it's not just your school but it's the parent community or even outreaching the preschool community. We have a variety of preschools that families attend and there are times that we'll work on connecting with those programs but how wonderful to offer some opportunities for future parents that perhaps aren't even in the school system. So I do mm -hmm. see that being used quite a bit. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing that I find really exciting is that I have been a fair amount in middle and the high schools and I see the attention to detail that this district has for, you know, uh, for their curriculum and for how they're integrating all these different things and it's going to be really, really cool to see how this translates into your grade levels at Marathon School. Now I noticed the, uh, the cafetorium, which I thought was a pretty cool idea and I was wondering, do you teach a program like that at center school? Like where you use a drama space and you, the kids do productions now? So we don't now, but well, I, don't, I shouldn't say we don't. We do, but it's a very different. Children sit on the gymnasium floor. If they're performing in the gymnasium, they might stand up where they are. They might move to the front of the gymnasium. So there's not a performance area. Mm -hmm. So that would be new for us. They do uh, wonderful um, lessons and songs and music class, but because it's a traveling program right now, it's limited in terms of use of instruments. We will have a music room right behind that cafetorium where children can use the drums that have been in storage, mm -hmm. um, use the um, xylophones or the glockenspiels, you know, <laughs> as they're officially called. All of that good stuff and there's an opportunity for a stage performance, be it even a puppet presentation coming in or outside performers. Right now we sit on the gymnasium floor and it's not the best in terms of setting up an audience for that attention when you have a performer coming in. So now there will be a stage area where even outside performers can come in or evening speakers, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's wonderful light in that room, um, yeah. lots of potential. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to point out and kind of get both of your inputs around um, in the footage we saw the entryway and I know that there's been a challenge around the dual entry system that we have in place in the other buildings. When I heard him speak about the entryway both it being open and welcoming um, as well as providing additional you know safety measures. Um, I guess I'll start with you, Tara, thinking about the parent perspective, and you've gone, you go now to, well, I guess now that you have a child in middle school, you've had experience arriving at each of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you're looking forward to um, as it relates to, you know, openness to parents and accessibility to parents at the new building? Um, for one, it would be not dropping a lunch off in that little outside <laughs> bin. Because <laughs> 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 that's tough. Um, I realize that, you know, you don't want people in and out. I don't want people in and out of that building. Um, but it would be more inviting if from a parent because you're housing our tiniest, your ba our babies, you know? So yeah. to all of a sudden go from preschool to center school or the marathon school and all of a sudden be denied access to your kids, it's yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. But you had 
to go into an entranceway like that and to be able to speak to the secretaries and not through a brick wall, right. um, it'll be a big difference. Oh yeah, that's a real, and, and I just thought of that question as I saw the video and then had you sitting here. Um, when you make the reference to the bin for those people who are watching who don't have a center school student, can you just explain what that is? <laughs> so since there is no separation, since there's no, um, what do you call it? The, just the dual entry? entry. Like the dual yeah. entry. Yeah. Um, there is a box, I believe, from Home Depot or yeah. something. So it's what you would put in your yard to, to store cushions. 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 <laughs> and um, you get you buzz in and you tell uh, the secretaries that you're there dropping off. And you, there's a post-it note and a pen, and you write it and stick it on the uh, the lunch. But you have to stick it outside. Yeah. Um, anything that they forget. Whether yeah. It's, yeah. Um, also, what's going to be nice about the new school is like, I mean. Center school is kind of tough when you're going there because you can't park right at the front door mm -hmm. and then you got to kind of walk and go up the stairs. I think this new school is going to be so much more welcoming where you just park and walk straight in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And there'll be no more illegal parking downtown. Mm. <laughs> when you come pick up your gym. <laughs> you do. I mean, you have to get there. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's true. Yeah. What about you, Lauren, when you think about the access to the building and just that whole entryway? Well, it, I think it is much more inviting for visitors, for parents, even to start your day as a student, to come in to, if you're a parent drop-off, you'll come in through that main door, the, um, um, the side door for those that are riding the bus. It's a great way to start your day. And what's tricky, as Tara mentioned, we don't have room to have that double um, entry. So parents are leaving things outside. They are leaving library books, lunches. Um, and, it, it, and it's not the most welcoming atmosphere with that. So all yeah. the other schools have a table, they've got plants, it, <laughs> it, it softens that yeah. separation, and we just don't have the physical space right. to do that. Right. So I'm looking right. forward to um, a change, mm -hmm. change with that. Yeah, I think it's really convenient at the middle and high school. You don't have to go through the double, you know, the double entry if you just need to drop something off. Both schools have uh, like a closet yeah, yeah. in that space. Yes. So you just yeah. go in the first door, you pop it in there, and then yeah. I see kids who are, you know, getting getting out to get that stuff and bring right. it to their room. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the joint, uh, the community areas that are going to be accessible to the community because we all know that, you know, there there's always need for more areas where we can come together and so uh, maybe just talk about what, what you're excited about with the media center, the, um, the cafetorium that you described, the mm -hmm. gymnasium. So the gymnasium I'm sure will be used quite often as our gymnasium now is at center school for um, recreational activities, basketball most um, importantly it seems <laughs> over the weekends and it will be set up that it can accommodate our young students for PE classes yes. and to successfully you know shoot a hoop um, and get that in with some side ones that lower as well as for adults who who would be using that on nice. the weekend Great. the building has been set up so that community access access can occur over the weekends and then you can close off the other aspects of the building so that if uh, someone is coming in to use the cafeteria space for meetings or the stage to practice or perhaps the gymnasium that the that can happen without um, allowing complete access to the building. Mm -hmm. So that's something that was well planned yeah, out. That's great. And what about the media center? That as well or not? So the media center is on the second floor. Most mm -hmm. likely that would be used with school functions. Okay. I would see that happening with yep. some evening um, events. Um, if the family resource center was not large enough, yes. which is comparable to the size of a class, you would have that availability mm -hmm. in that space for that. That's awesome. Mm. Right. So I'm wondering, um, there's like, I assume every teacher is going to have a room in this and yes. no, no art on a cart or anything like yeah. that now. So I'm just wondering like what you're hearing, what the teachers are most looking forward to and also from your organizations, mm -hmm. um, like the things that the aspects of this school either programmatically or facilities that they talk about. Mm. That's like, oh, I can't wait to get into this part. I think teachers are looking forward to space for their items. Um, storage is a challenge for us at Center School, so having sufficient space for their materials, for the books for their classroom, 
having a designated space, while it's wonderful to share, it will be wonderful to know this is my space that I am instructing in. I can spread out, if you will, um, having room to move and, and teach actively, because that's something we work on with our students. For the art and music to have a room to teach as that domain should be taught. The art teacher will have a room that is set up for incredible art lessons. It's wonderful now on a cart, they do incredible projects, but it's limited. Not all of our classrooms have a sink. How do you have art where you need to wash up after? Mm. How do you dry painting items? Oh, How do yeah. you work with clay? Mm -hmm. She's very resourceful, but just imagine what those projects will look like when you have space to really get a little messy in art mm -hmm. um, and not worry about leaving the room for literacy centers in two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's mm -hmm. a challenge um, for the music to be able to make noise, spread out, and have space and use instruments that you wouldn't move because they're really heavy. Yeah. Um, that they just, been exactly, using. exactly. Yeah. They've yeah. been in storage. Um, to have a piano, again, mm -hmm. I mean, these things are just um, exciting, very yeah. exciting to us. And to let the kids move around. Yes, yes. Just move from, from, from class, class to class. class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thinking of your um, Educate Hopkinton hat, um, mm -hmm. what, are th what are some things from that organization's perspective that, that they're looking forward to? Not so much just as, not just, not so yeah. much as a parent of three, but as a member of that organization. So on behalf of Educate Hopkinton, we are always looking for space to hold forums, to have our meetings. Um, so we're always looking for just a really good space that yeah. we can get you know, the maximum amount of people there. Right, right. Um, I think I'm a little more excited about the opportunities for the PTA because um, for the past three years I've done the extracurricular programming at uh, Center Elmwood and Hopkins. Right. Um, and at Center it's challenging because we're only allowed to use two rooms. Um, and with this new building, there are so many more opportunities for us to have these afternoon activities for the kids. Um, a lot of the teachers really want to conduct these programs, so they do them in their own classrooms because mm -hmm. we don't bring instructors into classrooms. Right. Um, but the teachers, if they want to do it, yeah. Um, so it'll be great opportunity for that. Um, and just, you know. I think the space is, can be used by the entire town, like you mentioned. Right, right. Like my sixth grader is going to benefit from this building. Um, that is a great point, right? Yes. Because I think that, you know, for some people, and thank you for saying that, some people that maybe feel like, oh, we missed the boat, we didn't, our children did not get to benefit as, as students in the building. But I think it's very true that children who are in, in different grades will still get to benefit from the building in, in, a, in a variety of capacities. There's going to be also an additional field there. Mm -hmm. um, that we are hopeful that community members will be accessing. And the, uh, the, the fact that it's located right next door to yes. EMC, mm -hmm. um, that people can be coming back and forth. We've talked about events and shared mm -hmm. parking mm -hmm. and creating an access point between the two parking lots so that different events in town can be enjoyed um, and that there can be some support between departments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I had three kids go through center school and I think that the most, the most cherished stuff that you carry away from that is just um, the love that exists in that school. You know, the teachers are all so kind and the kids have such a great experience there that it really is great in spite of the building. Mm -hmm. I will never forget the first time I went into the cafeteria and I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is where they're eating? Well, like, that stuff doesn't matter no. because they get, they like, they just get so sparked being there yeah. that it's just going to be, it's going to be awesome to see what happens when you don't have any hindrances right. um, from the yes. facility. Yes. So in yes. terms of that collaboration and climate, to see when you don't have the constraints of that space, I just see it flourishing mm -hmm. and expanding. Yeah. That's what, this, that's what this system is great at, is like encouraging and supporting um, the roles that the teachers have in their classes. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm trying to think of, so we've talked about the facility across towns and we've talked about, what about, I know Lauren and I work together on the educational plan for the MSBA and one of the things that we were particularly excited about um, and needs to be celebrated here is the uniqueness of this building and the way it was designed to meet the educational needs of our youngest learners. And it was, you know, you've alluded to that in a couple of examples, but I think it, it's worth saying that the educational program, the building was designed to meet the educational program of this particular learning um, area, this group, 
And uh, we actually had to write it a second time because it was so unique, right, yes. to the MSBA. They hadn't seen anything like it before that we had to go back to the drawing board and write it a second time um, because it was so important that it be specific to the learning needs. So what comes to mind, Lauren, specifically, because I know you've taught a wide range of students, for the learning needs of these, these pre-K-1 students? So something that was on many minds when we were building was the number of bathrooms. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is important to us at this level. We want to maximize time that children are engaged in active learning. Right now it is class trips to the bathroom, it is um, you know, down the hall, and it now actually for um, code requirements for preschool and kindergarten, there is a bathroom right off each class, and that was in the, the video tour. Mm -hmm. That will increase the amount of time that children are participating in learning activities in the class. It will also help um, acclimate students to a bathroom outside of their home. That's a really big deal for yeah. children. We have children oh, yeah. who are hesitant in a large bathroom, who like to go only at home. I mean, these are things that are mm -hmm. factors of mm -hmm. working with young children. We still have community bathrooms, if you will, by the gymnasium and cafeteria, first mm -hmm. grade floor, but the opportunity is there for your private bathroom that just you can go in. Um, and that, that is a really a big, big deal. Yeah to have sinks in each classroom so that if we're doing projects and it's an art project and you know I, I'd like kids to get messy at school I'd like them to explore and experiment even if it's not an art class if it's mm -hmm. other methods um, you know we have access to wash up and um, clean up we have access to wonderful windows and a mm -hmm. heating system that can help regulate uh, whether it's heat or cool, those are challenges that we face now. So to really have the space to spread out, design the room with the furniture in mind that provides for a variety of areas. Some of our classes, due to the physical footprint of the room, were limited and they're tighter than others. And mm -hmm. you don't have as much room to move. Mm -hmm. um, right now, all the classrooms are not equal in size at center. And now building a new building, there is a requirement, there's a footprint. So if there's any difference, it's very slight. Mm -hmm. And it might be because some duct work needed to go through now, that are, area. Yeah. Are any of the furnishings particular, like are sinks low or oh, anything absolutely. like that? Oh, absolutely. Toilets so too. There really? is a difference. Oh, yes. yeah. So there is a difference between kindergarten and first grade for height requirements. Okay. So you'll see some rooms, for example, the art room will have different level sinks so that it is in compliance for those in kindergarten because we do uh, in the future would like to expand our art program for kindergartners, but it also is accessible for first graders. Okay. And then you'll also have an open area if someone was in a wheelchair that there's accessibility. So some yeah. are open underneath um, and some are closed with a cabinet underneath, but making sure that we've got appropriate size fixtures, um, mm -hmm. that's also important. Um, well, yeah. We are so excited yeah. that you were our first guests of the season. Yeah. Um, it, hitting it off on the right on the right note I believe and uh, talk about highlights on the hill this is certainly a, a wonderful highlight yeah. um, you've been wonderful guests and we really appreciate you yes. being here well happy thank to share thank you all right thank you both and thank you all for watching this episode and we look forward to seeing you next time on another new edition of highlights from the hill <music>